system that's going on in your head at the time. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. When Paul was placed under certain, uh, in, uh, certain uh, situations in his ministry, Paul ran from places. He was let down by uh, some of the saints of the church out of the city when they was pursuing him to kill him. This was not sin. Paul was just running because, as I said to you earlier, there's times when we have to we have to leave certain areas. We have to leave in a hurry because it's dangerous to us mm -hmm. physically and dangerous to our life at that moment. Mm -hmm. And again, as I have already said, if, if temptation and, and iniquity and wickedness is pressing so hard upon us that we, we feel that we're going to break weak and, and commit sin and iniquity before God, it might even be wise to flee that circumstance. Because the scripture do give us that liberty and that direction. When temptation gets too great, and, I, and I'm going to give you a picture, Joseph, amen, not Joseph, I, I, yeah, Joseph, when he was in Egypt, and uh, Potiphar's wife oh, yeah. was pressing upon him to have sex with her against God's commandments and against God's righteous laws and against the conviction of Jacob's heart. I mean, Joseph's heart. Joseph knew, amen, this woman was not going to take no for an answer. And Joseph knew that if he stayed there, he was going to be compromised in a circumstance that would not look good to the servants of that house and most definitely wouldn't look good to Potiphar when he returned and was, and, and was advised of what happened. But Joseph, so Joseph he, he ran out of his cloak, out of his clothing to get away from this lustful woman, the wife of Potiphar. Yes. And we know the story of how that when Potiphar came back, amen, his servants advised him and the wife came and topped it off with her personal testimony, which was a lie. Amen. And Potiphar was not wise enough to sit back, let his anger cool off, and ask the servants, oh, have any of you seen Joseph pursuing my wife in any manner? The answer would have been no, sir. No, sir, we've been in the house all the time around Joseph and your wife, and we've never seen him pursuing your wife. He doesn't, he's not infatuated with Mrs. Potiphar. He has no intention of getting it. If he had just took time to search the thing out. Yes, yes. But no, Potiphar got into his flesh, got into his anger, into his authority, and he took Joseph and, and took him before the authorities and got them to condemn him and threw him into the, the, uh, the dungeon of the prison. And you know the story because you read it, and it's a very familiar story in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But today I want to talk to you about, amen, uh, uh, who you're going to run from. Amen. Are you going to run from, amen, uh, your fear? Uh, are you going to run, are you going to, uh, where are you going to go? You're going to run to God or from God in times of desperation. You can see I'm, I'm kind of struggling with the subject matter, but I think you got it. Amen. I think you got it. Amen. There's times when we're going to have to flee. And what are you going to choose to flee from? You're going to flee to the Lord in times of desperation, or you're going to flee from Him. The choice is up to you. Amen. And so we find today, in, as we were reading in the earlier scripture in the Old Testament in Genesis, a very familiar story there where we know again here, uh, uh, Rebecca, amen, was trying to look out for her most favorite son, amen, Joseph. And she, amen, took and gave him advice as to how to get the blessing from Jacob. And, and she also had been, and the reason why Rebecca was doing this, it was not because Re Rebecca was an evil or a wicked woman. It was not. God had told Rebecca while she was carrying these developing boys in her womb, God had given her, given her divine insight about how each boy would live before God and how God saw the outcome of their life and as they committed themselves and if they would commit themselves to God, God just warned her. He said, in your womb, uh, Rebecca, are two nations. Amen. And he said, the younger shall rule over 
the, he said the older shall serve the younger and the younger shall rule over the older. So Rebecca was just trying to, in her weakness and in her lack of total faith in God, for God to work out the circumstance, Rebecca thought she had to get in there and kind of help God get this thing done. Amen. We see that in Sarah. We see that in several other of the women of God, uh, the patriarch's wives and the patriarch, patriarch ladies of the Bible. We see them. Amen. And I want to tell you something. We have fallen into the same trap with God ourselves. Amen. We have not believe God's word and we've done some things that we have regretted after we had after we completed or got well into what we were doing and God maybe helped us and stopped us and we saw that we was out of the will of God and we, we would be out of the will of God if we continued to do what we were planning to do. But in this case, amen, Rebecca thought she had to set, uh, help God with this situation. So she told uh, Joseph, said, Joseph, my dear son, uh, go and get and kill a goat. Amen. And bring him to me, a kid, and bring him to me. And I'm going to skin the kid out. And we're going to take the hide and we're going to take place it flesh down against your skin and drape it over your shoulders. And you're going to go in and get the, 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 the firstborn blessing from your father because Jacob was getting old in his life. And Jacob knew that the end of his days were coming. Amen. And that he would soon die and pass off the scene. And I'm so absolutely grateful and thankful for Mother Amen, uh, Amen Meriwether for what she said to us this morning about the patriarch a patriarchal blessing of children in the old in the old days. But as I'm glad she told us that we can also bless our children in our day and in our time by giving them an heritage from the Lord. Amen. That would bless them in everything that they do. Amen. Uh, do you remember in the Old Testament when God was talking to Israel about the choices that they had, amen, to either choose God and flee to God, run to God, or amen, disobey God and have to suffer the consequences of their decision. God told them, you can choose blessing and life or you can choose disobedience and death. Amen. God said uh, distinctly to Israel that the choice is indeed yours. And then God said to them, uh, he said, uh, for, for amen, for emphasis, I want to point out two mountains to you. And so God looked at two prominent mountains and he said to Israel, he said, upon Mount Gerizim, amen, I believe one of them was named, amen, he said, is blessings and obedience, or obedience and blessings. And upon the other mountain, he said, God did, he said, is uh, your choice of disobedience, amen, and death. And God said, if you choose, amen, uh, to obey me and to walk before me and to do my commandments, he said, God, I want to share with you. God said to them, I'll bless you when you go in and I'll bless you when you're coming out. He said, I'll bless the fruit of your womb. In other words, I'll bless your children. He said, I'll bless your, your, your food bin, your cupboard where you store your fruit, your food. He said that there will always be some food there for you. He said, amen, and I'll bless your cattle. And he named them, amen, the various different kind of cattle, amen. He said, I'll bless your land, and uh, there will never be a famine in your land. So God gave Israel and Jesus. Jesus to Christ has given us in our economy, amen, many reasons, amen, many blessings and many benefits, amen, where we should run to God rather than running away from him. And so Rebecca said, uh, kill this kid because your father is partial to wild game and I'm going to take this kid.
did, Rebecca said, and I'm going to cook it with savory seasoning, seasoning, and with the with the with the gravy and the and the, amen, all that your father loved. And then I want you to let me put this skin on you, amen, and batten it down. So when your father say, "Come near me," and he because Jacob in his old age had gotten blind, was going blind, and so when your father begins to because he's going to do it. Amen. He's going to feel of you. Amen. To see if you are indeed Esau, the hairy son of Jacob. Amen. And we know the rest of the story. He did it. And as he was talking to Jacob, amen, it's amazing how fathers and mothers, amen, know their children. Amen. Jacob asked him, he said, are you sure you're Jacob? Because the voice, uh, um, uh, are you sure you're Esau? Because the voice sounds like Jacob. Amen. And he said, come near. And he touched him. He said, but you have the feel of Esau. So therefore, amen, son, come here and I'm going to bless you. And he blessed him and conferred the firstborn, amen, birthright upon Jacob. Amen. And he gave his father the food. And Jacob blessed him and sent him on his way and enjoyed the savory meal that Rebecca had cooked him. Amen. But by and by, amen, the the, the the conniving and the scheming, amen, was brought out in the open. Here come Esau, amen. He said, Father, I'm here, ready for my blessing. And Jacob said, what? Amen, I've already blessed you, amen. And Esau said, no, you did not. He said, that scoundrel of a brother of mine, amen, I hate him, amen, he's always, amen, amen, doing things wrong. And he cried to his father. He said, is there a blessing? Amen. Another blessing. Do you have one more blessing that you could bless me with? Well, amen. But Esau tried to negotiate with Jacob. Amen. And so, saints of God, let's learn a lesson from how, amen, uh, Jacob and Esau, amen, uh, glory to God, amen, how Isaac, amen, conferred the blessing. When God pronounce a blessing, amen, it is pronounced and God will not take it back. Amen. And so Esau, amen, tried with tears and repentance, amen, to get his father to change his mind. But Jacob, amen, but uh, amen, Isaac, amen, had, amen, to stay with the blessing that was already conferred Amen. Saints of the Most High God. Amen. Let us walk upright. Amen. Before our God. Let us love Him with all of our heart. Amen. Let us hear His word and be obedient to His word. Because God, Amen, does not change His mind. Amen. And if we get ourselves into sin and into iniquity, and trespass. Amen. So much so until God sends his judgment. Amen. Amen. The only thing that God will do if you repent is God will suspend his judgment. Amen. He does not. The Bible declare that God is not like man. He does not repent. Whatever God says, he says it. Whatever God says, he means it. Amen. So let us, amen, amen, rather than fleeing from God, amen, let's live so we can flee to God. Amen. Keep the road open. Keep the pathway open. Amen. Keep sin out of the way. Amen. Love him with all your heart. Amen. Bless him with your soul. Amen. Amen. And be obedient to him so he can bless you and you can run to him. Amen. When the enemy taunts you and say flee to your mountain, you can say what David said. I will look 
to the hills. Amen. From which cometh my help. My help is in the Lord. David declared that created heaven and earth. Amen. We can say amen like David. Amen. He looks at me and he sees the righteousness of my hand. He searches my heart and he sees amen. And I'm obedient to it. Amen. God can see through us, saints of God. We can't hide from him. We can't cover from him. Amen. Let's live before him and love him with all of our heart. Thank you, Thank you, God. Glory. Ah, glory to God. Amen. Clap your hand and yes, give him glory. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. We find in Hebrews, yes. it says concerning Esau, mm -hmm. though he repented yes. and cried with strong tears, My God. <clears throat> My God. he had sold his birthright. Yes, he did. Uh huh. To his brother for a savory, kind of spicy bean and meat dish. He was coming back from a hunting trip one day. Mm -hmm. And Jacob and uh Amen. Jacob was a was a good cook. <coughs> he learned that from his mother. Oh well, yes. Being a fellow that did not do too much with the outdoors. He hung around the tent, Sister Kitty. Mm -hmm. So he was always kind of in the presence of his mom. I was kind of like that when I grew up. Uh, if y'all saw me, I was like, I was always hanging around in the kitchen, watching mom cook. And I learned a lot, Sister Kitty. I used to cook so well that when I was in the army, and I know I broke the rules, because the rules were we were supposed to eat in the kitchen, in the mess hall. But I bought me some cooking utensils like my daughter wants to do at college. And Sister Kathy, I'd put that crock pot and I'd hook them beans up, throw them ham hocks in there, and I'd have that Barry's Hall smell like a kitchen. And them guys would come down and, who's cooking in here? And I said, I said, oh God, is that the first sergeant? They would be the guys. And they'd say, man, they, they knew, after a while they knew, that's Robbie, man, he's cooking. Man, there's some pork chops in there. There's some beans in there. They, they would be pretty well calling it too. Hey, Amen. Why wow, my door? This is my door. And I said, go away. Hey, Amen. I just cooked enough for me. Amen. <laughs> hey, Sometimes I'd open up and share, but uh, them guys was hungry. They'd eat you out of the house and home. So I had to protect my investment. Hey, Amen. I tell them, go away. Man, you need to quit doing that. You messing us up. Hey, Amen. And, and so I, I kind of know what Jacob, how he did. So he was cooking this very good. He loved it. Par porridge, they called it. And, and he saw us coming, and he was hungry. And he said, what is that you got there? Jacob said, porridge. He said, now, can you, would you give me some? Jacob was always looking out for number one. Jacob was looking out for number one. See, he and mom had talked about this many a time. So Jacob said, now, yeah, I'll give you some if you'll sell me your birthright. Yeah. Amen. Mm. But see, Esau should have stopped and took stock of what he was about to do. Amen. Because the firstborn blessing conferred all of the property, uh, all of the uh, all of the powerful, most powerful blessings in the inheritance area to that firstborn. Now the rest got their part. Oh yeah, they got their part. But that firstborn got the godly blessings, got the eternal and divine blessings. Amen. Conferred from the patriarchal father onto that son. And it was Esau's right and privilege to get that. Amen. But he sold it. Hallelujah. And then when it come time for him to get it, amen, he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, I think he thought that even though he had, you know, uh, made that deal with, with, with Jacob, he thought he could still get that blessing because he went out to kill the, 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 the wild game, the deer, and bring it back and get his blessing. Somehow he was convinced he was going to get the blessing that he was supposed to get. But the book of Hebrews said he despised God's blessing. And when we do that, hallelujah, 
amen, we might as well start running from the Lord because it amounts to about the same thing. Amen, because God's judgment is going to fall on you. But in the case of these brothers, amen, when he came back, he found out that Jacob had that Jacob had the blessing. And he got angry and he purposed in his mind, I'm going to get it back because I'm going to erase the rascal. Amen. And then I'll stand as the only one living in the lineage of Isaac. And what God was in it. Amen. And the word got to Mama Rebecca. So she called in her son that God had said is going to be the leader. Is going to be the one that takes forward the blessing and covenant promise of God. Amen. So she said, son, amen. I don't want to lose both of my sons because here's the deal. Rebecca knew God's law. If Esau had killed Jacob, amen, under the law, a crime of passion, the law declared that the elders of the village would take Esau, find a low place, get a bunch of rocks, and stone him to death. So Rebecca said, I'm not going to lose both of my sons in the same day. Hallelujah. So Jacob, you listen to me, boy. Get yourself together. I got an uncle called Laban over in Syria. I want you to get to moving. Run for your life. By the way, say run. Amen. Run for your life. Amen. Sometimes we got to do it. Amen. To save our soul. Sometimes we have to flee. Amen. To yonder mountain. Sometimes we have to flee somewhere. But I want to tell you, while you are fleeing, amen, do like David. Lord, where are you? Amen. I'm looking to the hills from which come my help. Glory. Hallelujah. My help is in thee. Amen. And you can save me from all of my enemies. Clap your hand and give them to me. Don't let your friends mm -hmm. taunt you into running from God. All right. Amen. We see in 11th chapter of, uh, of, of, in, of uh, Psalms, and I'm getting ready to close. Amen. David was in Saul's house mm -hmm. <clears throat> in a twofold room mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. God, but, but, see, but Saul thought he was using David for his psychological ability to play the harp and to get rid of his depression, run away bad spirits. Mm -hmm. But God had a plan. He was training David like God trains all of us. Mm -hmm. Say, train me, Lord. Train. train me, Lord. Amen. What God does, he looks at your life. He looks at the calling that he has for you. David mm -hmm. knew who he was already. Sometimes it takes us a while to, de to discern what God is going to do with us. But I want to tell you something. Don't worry about it because he will reveal to you everything you need to know in the right time. At the right time. So just let, stay in God's plan. Let him mold you. Let him shape you. So David was armor bearer. First of all, armor bearer for Saul. And then the medicinal part for that melancholy and depression. But God was training. God was letting him see how a king moves, how the decisions that a king makes, how he governs his privy council. You know, like King Arthur. King, had the, king Arthur had the night of the round table well, with, with King Saul. King Saul had all of his valiant men, and he had his general, Joab, whoever it was, Amen. Uh, that was with him. Amen. That joy was with David. That other one was with, with Saul. I forget his name. Who was a general for him. Amen. So he would call him in. They'd have these meetings. These round table <coughs> sort of meetings. <coughs> and also they would sit down and eat together. Because but 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 Saul was jealous of David and angry at David that 
that David had been anointed king and Saul was trying to figure out whether he in his wicked mind, whether or not he should kill him instantly or keep him where he could get him killed by the Philistine enemies. So God began to train David. Say, train me, Lord. He began to train David. First of all, God said, now while you are here, playing music for Saul and being his armor bearer. Uh, Saul is going to move you up. Uh, he said, and he, and he allowed David to go out with his valiant men. And when David fought, amen, David was a terror to the enemy. Amen. He killed ferociously like a man. Uh, <clears throat> the general, amen, amen, uh, in that movie that I like, amen, who was made a slave and put in the arenas of the Roman society, and the general who was a slave, amen, took some men that were slaves and trained them how to fight, amen, and when they were put in the in arenas as a one force against another force, the, the authority in the general, the knowledge in the general, amen, who's a slave, he would direct the men what to do and how to do it, and they won the battle every time, amen, but amen, so Saul began to be jealous a second time for another reason, for the women of Israel began to sing, Saul has killed his 10,000, but, but thousand, but David, his 10,000, hallelujah, amen, so Saul said, my plan's not working. I got to put David in a position where he's going to be put in the heat of the battle. And I'm going to let the Philistines kill him. Amen. And so Saul did something that I don't know if he knew what he was doing because God was in the plan. Saul took, Saul made, in my view, what amounts to a special force crew. Saul took the valiant Best fighters from every part of his army put him in one unit and put David not to insult the general, but right under the general over the valiant men. And he knew the leader had to be up front. So he said, I'm going to do this because I want the Philistines to kill him so his blood won't, because all was a conniving dude. Amen. But God said, live. Mm -hmm. And David wasn't killed. So Saul said, I gotta step it up a notch. Three times Saul tried to kill him with his jabbing. While David was sitting at his food at his table in his house. Saul would pick an opportunity time and draw back. And the Lord would say, Move David to the left. David would sigh and there would jab him. Stick in the wall. Then he and Jonathan began to talk about it. And Jonathan said, Yeah, you're right, Dad is tripping. Well, I gotta find out if he's going if he's real. I want I want to find out something. I want you to hang loose, David. Hide out in the outback. Mm -hmm. Hide out in the outback, and stay low behind a certain rock in a certain area. And I'm gonna have my. I normally go out and practice shooting long, out long shots. So I'm gonna have my my run my arrow collecting boy with me, and I'm gonna shoot on tomorrow morning about ten o'clock in the morning, and I'm gonna shoot an arrow. And if I shoot it so it falls on this side, and the boys look at me and say, no, 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 don't go way down there. Come back to this side, and that's the signal they set up. Amen. But if I say, go way far past, it's on the other side. That's the signal that, yes, my dad is angry. Yes, he's determined to kill you, and you need to flee to your country. That's why in the Psalms 9 11, flee to your mountain. His enemies was taunting him. They asked him a question. Since you such a bad, such a bad, valiant man, since you so, you know, good at what you do, and since you know the king is fixing to kill you and all his men, why don't you flee to yonder, to your mountain? Uh-huh. Don't you flee to your mountain? David said, no, 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 no. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord who made heaven and earth. Okay. And David had another famous saying, saying, I'm going to lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Amen. And so 
they, David and Jonathan, they and Jonathan shot the arrow way down and told him to run for his life. Amen. And the enemies began. Maybe some of the people he knew. Amen. Maybe some of the people of Israel who now, amen, turned against him. And you know the story of what David said in the scripture. And I'm getting ready to close. But he said, though my mother and my father forsake me, he said, the Lord will take me up. Amen. He will step in and be my help. He will be my shield and buckler, my strong tower. Amen. My high tower, my amen, my wall against the blast of the wind. David described God, what God was doing for him. And so David said, I'm not fleeing. I'm trusting in the Lord. And so by the way, when times get tough, when things get hard, amen, Though, amen, though, amen, uh, Jacob had to run for his life, uh, amen, uh, those, uh, amen, Paul had to run for his life, uh, amen, let us, amen, uh, remember this, uh, God said uh, to us in the Christian economy, he said to, amen, some of the saints, uh, amen, he said, God said to, to David in Psalm, uh, I will be uh, your real reward, uh, I will be your real reward. Which means God said to David, look my friend, you don't have to run. Just find a place and stand. And David demonstrated his faith. David found, amen, close to where Saul was. But yet out in the outback, a cave called the cave of Adonah. It was hard to find, but David found it. And his men, first David went in there. And then his special forces used unit found out that their leader was running for his life and they fell out with Saul and 400 of them disgruntled men amen uh, 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 put out with King Saul put out with his government amen God knows how to get you some help amen this special forces group 400 valiant men came to David in the cave of Adonah and three of them were more valiant than all the rest. Amen. Joab. Amen. Abishai. Amen. And the three of them, as I close, they fought their way into the Hittite controlled old Jerusalem called Salem at that time. And they fought their way through the aqueduct system into that fortified city. Kill the enemy all the way to the spring. David was just kind of reminiscing. He was just reminiscing of his times of going to the temple. And he remembered a spring near the temple with cold water. An artesian spring continually. And David was just reminiscing. He said, oh, man, what would I give for a glass of water for that spring? on the southern front property of the temple. Mm -hmm. Them three guys, those three bad dudes, those three valiant men that were been more valiant than the rest, they looked at each other. Let's get the king a glass of water. One of them guys scooped up a glass and these dudes snuck away from the camp. They didn't even tell the rest of the camp. And they went and blocked off that water flow, went into that aqueduct system, come up out of there and the enemy, oh, the enemy is inside. They thought they fought their way to the well, scooped the glass, fought their way back, and ran on out and then unstopped the water and flooded it. Probably wiped out some people trying to come and get them from underneath that thing. And they handed David that water. Watch David. David said, he looked at his men. They were cut by all those swords, those guys. They, they, they risked their life. They almost got killed. David said, I will not drink water for which men have hazarded their life to get for me. So he took it and poured it out before God as a drink offering mm -hmm. unto the Lord. Yeah. Clap your hands. And get out of here. I had you to say, train me, Lord. Yes. See, God was still training David. He was training him to be compassionate. For men or women or anybody in your cabinet go way out far and beyond and sacrifice for you, don't you count it as nothing.
you make it important. Amen. Very so David blessed those men who did that so he could get that water. He didn't drink it. He poured it out as a drink offering before God. Amen. And gave him the glass. So David was learning how to be compassionate. And David was one of the best kings of Israel. What did God say concerning him? He's a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. So I know by the way, yes, there's going to be times when we need to flee. We don't need to flee because the pressure is too great. Our faith may be wavering just a little bit. We've got to move. We've got to leave things alone. We're once dealing with it. We see it's bad. It's against us. It's going to call it. It's going to curse us. It's going to hurt our lives. It's going to affect our future. You have to flee away from things like that. Don't run into the traps of the devil. Amen. Don't do that. But when you flee, run to the Lord. Amen. Like that rich young yes. ruler. Only don't leave him All right. like the rich young ruler All did. Right. When Jesus explained to you what kind of suffering you're going to have to go through. Yes. Amen. Don't leave him with your head down. Stay right there and say, Lord, make me. Shape me. Mold me. Made me what you would have me to be. Rich Don Ruler went away saying because he didn't want to give up. He thought he wanted salvation. He was, he was excited about it. He was energetic. He ran to the Lord. Tell me what I got to do to inherit eternal life. Amen. And when the Lord looked at him and loved him and examined him according to the law and accepted his heart, all oh, the riches, the riches, they're going to cause problems. He won't be able to serve me like I want him to because of the riches. Sometimes God will make us move from church A to church B to get you ready to go to your destiny. Sometimes God will take you off the choir, put you on the pew, tell you to pray for six months to get you ready for your destiny. Sometimes God will do like he did me when he chose me Long before I knew it, and had a preaching ministry for me and a teaching ministry for me, God made me start working with outlines and preaching 101 before I knew I was even called to be a preacher. Right out of, right out of outline. I had 12, 13, and 14 of them in the back of my Bible, and I'm wondering, what am I doing? Why am I so hungry for the Word of God? Kathy didn't tell me either. Until way down the line. And then I went to my preachers and I began to seek it out. I said, What does this mean? They talk, we talk, and one of them asked me, What do you think it means? God is dealing with you. What is He saying to you through this work that He's having you to do? I said, I believe He's calling me into the ministry. The preacher looked at me and said, You got it. I believe that too. He was a wise man. He didn't tell me. You're a preacher. You're a prophet. You're, you're going to be a bishop. He said, God is putting you through. He's teaching you. You need to know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to tell you. What are you going to tell me if I couldn't tell him once you pray? You pray. Because God can tell you explicitly what he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for Standing on your feet, standing on your feet, everybody stand.